fan. I welcome you to Glory Temple Christian Center. We apologize for the disruptions in the internet connections today, but we believe that God has a message for you and you are in for a great blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to quickly share with you, in line with our theme for this month, we have been talking about recovery. This is the month of total recovery. Total recovery. Hallelujah. Total recovery. And today, we are looking about you know, the steps to take for total recovery. Now, in the... Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 Ephesians 1 verse 15 that's verse 15 to 23 okay Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 to 23 therefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come hallelujah and you can read verse 22 and 23 there this morning i speak to you on discover to recover Amen. discover to recover like i said this is our month of recovery total recovery total recovery hallelujah whatever we have lost to the enemy physically spiritually emotionally financially maritally we are recovering all we are recovering all in the name of jesus Amen. we are out to recover all that the devil stole from us we are out to investigate the details of who we are now that we are in Christ. We learned in the month of July that each one of us have been born with natural gifts and talents apart from the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We are all born with a God-given assignment. We are all born with a purpose which God intends for us to achieve in this life, then give him the account when we meet our Lord and Savior face to face at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Now, but for, for us to discover our purpose in life and live as new creatures on earth, we need to discover to re before we can recover our destiny we need to discover what is it that God has given us what is it you know that Jesus died to make us what is it who you know what class of people in had Jesus programmed us to be in the kingdom that we find ourselves right now hallelujah oh hallelujah praise God Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. As I speak to you, the grace to discover is being released. 
the grace to discover who you are, the grace to discover who you have become, is being released in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. True Christianity starts with a supernatural discovery of what is popularly called divine revelation. Hallelujah. Christianity was imported from heaven. It is a heavenly commodity. Jesus himself came down to give us this new relationship we have with, G with God. Hallelujah. Amen. It is the kingdom of heaven and earth. You know, so people only benefit from it only when we begin to discover it is given to us. You know, it is uh, it's not a natural commodity. It's not something that is available within the human natural environment. For us to really discover who God has made us, we need a revelation. We need a discovery. You know, and I want to take time to explain to you to this morning all about revelation. That is the only way we can benefit from the kingdom of God. In uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 15 to 16, for example, Matthew 15, Matthew 15, thank you Lord, Matthew chapter 15, verse 15, sorry, Matthew 16, verse 15 and 16, he said to them, this is your uh, Jesus speaking to his disciples, Matthew chapter 16. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, verse 17, Blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, Simon son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. This Amen. is the beginning of the church. Jesus was so excited that Peter could give that answer. You know, Peter has been with the disciples have been with Jesus for years but didn't really know who he was he put the question to them you know on this particular occasion and in the twinkling of an eye the heavenly father opened Peter's eyes to discover who Jesus was Amen. hallelujah Praise God. Peter and all the other disciples have been around with Jesus for years. They probably had known him before they became his disciples. Because they were all growing up around Galilee. You know, all of them, most of the disciples are from Galilee area. You know, but they never discovered who he really was. Even when he called them, come and become my disciples. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They really, really didn't know exactly who Jesus was until it was given to them by the Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. And from that we learn that so many of us, you know, may be going to church for so many years now. Many people can be going to church, you know, for many years and not know exactly what the new life is all about. We may have the Bible with us different translations you know we are very active in church but we may not know what the new life is all about or even start to benefit from it this is the reason why the holy spirit has gotten us to this level this month Amen. it is time to discover Amen. it is time to discover Hallelujah. so that we can recover all that we have lost to the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Apostle Paul recognized this and prayed for believers in the place we read in Ephesians chapter 1. In his letter to the Ephesians, you know, 
He prayed that they may receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in order to grow in their knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Revelation here is translated from the, the Greek word apocalypsis. Apocalypsis. Amen. An unveiling or uncovering. It's like somebody, you know, that you are in a house with, a, uh, with curtains or blinds. No. Somebody was behind the blind. You will not be able. You will not see the person until the curtain is, you know, uncovered. Is pulled aside, and you can see the person behind the curtain. That's exactly what Revelation is talking about. Hallelujah! Everything concerning the kingdom of God is behind the veil for the natural man. You know. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, that the natural man cannot understand the things of God. And that natural man does not necessarily mean a sinner. He could be saved, be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. But if you have not grown to walk in the Spirit, if you have not grown you know, to appreciate the things of the Spirit, the things of the kingdom of God remain, you know, a mere story. And many people try to cover up, you know, by being religious, you know, they, they come to church all the time, you know, they, they, they go out for witnessing, but the real truth of God's kingdom have not been given back in their spirit. This morning, your story is about to change. Amen. Today, the Holy Spirit is visiting us. Amen. So take the veil away so that you can really, really discover who we have become. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Your old you have passed away. It's no longer you that lives. You are not your old self. No. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. And it's time to discover who you really are. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. You know, an unveiling or uncovering, it is the revealing of mysteries and the secrets of God. In uh, Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8, the Bible says that you know, God's ways are different from our own ways. Hallelujah. And his thoughts are different from our thoughts. But out of his love and grace, because of the love of God, he said, God so loved the world. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 13, verse 11, that, you know, the revelation of the secrets of God's kingdom, the revelation of God's secrets has been given to us the believers. He said to you it has been given to understand the secrets of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. <laughs> you know, in verse uh, 17 of uh, Matthew chapter 13, Jesus said that even the prophets and very righteous people in the past, especially in the Old Testament, long to hear what we are hearing today. Long to see, you know, what we are seeing today. But they couldn't. Because Jesus has not come at that time yet. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. But thank God, with all that Jesus has passed through, with all the sacrifice he has made, you and I cannot continue living without revelation. We cannot continue to depend on religion. We cannot continue to depend on outward appearances. We cannot continue to depend on, you know, a bandwagon effect of Christianity. And others are doing it, and then let's do it also. No. God expects you and every one of us to have a personal revelation of who Jesus is, what he has done for us, 
what we have in him and what we should be achieving for him. Amen. Amen. So, how do we receive revelation? How do we discover? What is the process of receiving revelation? Well, revelation comes in several ways. But I want to take time to describe the normal process of revelation this morning. The normal process of revelation. Number one, it comes by asking. Remember in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7, Jesus said, Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. For he that asketh receiveth. And so on. Amen. It comes by asking. It comes by asking. I think Jesus set Peter up in that place we read in Matthew 16 for a revelation by asking that question. Who do men say that I am? It always comes by asking questions. You know? That's what Apostle Paul did in a uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15, that's what he's asking us to do, you know. He says, I heard that you guys uh, have become very serious Christians. You know, you love the brethren. It's a great, the first sign of being a serious Christian is to love the brethren. Love the brethren. Hallelujah. So he said, that's, I have seen very good signs of your being saved. You are now born again. Therefore, I started praying for you that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. He started praying for them that they will not just, you know, hear by hearing sake, but have a revelation, a discovery of what they are, you know, doing now of you know, who they are in God's kingdom. You know, he asked, he prayed on their behalf. He prayed on their behalf. In um, Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 18 and 19. Mm. Psalm 119, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are having a little challenge with our internet connection today, but we are more than conquerors all the time. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, in verse 18 and 19, the Bible says that, Open my eyes, that I may see wondrous things from your law. I am a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. Hallelujah. The psalmist was asking that God will open his eyes. You know, when a believer comes to Christ, this should be a major prayer request. This should be the cause for prayer and fasting. Taking time out to wait on the Lord. And asking God for the revelation, you know, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in his word. In his word. You know, so many professors are handling God's word without knowing the meaning. As a matter of fact, in our uh, university in those days, the C a one senior lecturer in the Bible knowledge department was an atheist, a self-professed atheist. He didn't believe in God at all, but he was teaching the Bible. You know. So this, we're not talking, the, the knowledge of God that we need to become who Jesus died to make us to be, does not come from you know, the four walls of a classroom. No, it doesn't come from intellectual exercise. It comes by revelation and we need to ask we need to pray for it 
Secondly, the process of revelation starts by reading, studying, and meditating in God's Word. You meditate on God's Word. Apostle Paul was encouraging Timothy to meditate on God's Word, you know, and to continue to improve on his knowledge of the Word of God. You know, and Joshua, we are told in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, let's read that scripture again this morning. Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 1, in verse 8. The Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Revelation comes when we interact with God's word. We need to continually interact with the written word of God. <coughs> The written word of God, you know, is the flower bed of revelation. It is where revelation grows from. It is the manure for revelation. Hallelujah. The written word of God is the seed. But the fruit that feeds the believer is revelation. Praise Jesus. So we must continually study. We study, we spend, you know, a lot of time studying, go to Google, find out the meaning of the words that are used in the Bible. You are studying, you are studying. There are so many Bible helps online right now that where you can learn the scriptures, you know, you know, verse by verse. Study, study. First of all, you need to know, you need to have the knowledge. You know, that is the process of revelation. Amen. Knowledge understanding the wisdom hallelujah Amen. study meditate let it be in your mouth it's part of meditation you know what you know in your heart must come through your mouth that is how faith is produced amen you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth praise amen. jesus hallelujah. amen so we ask for revelation, we interact with God's word by studying, reading, or studying, and meditation. And however, the chief revealer of God's word is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The, Lord. the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, Christianity is drab, dry, and empty. The Holy Spirit is our link with heaven. The Spirit of God was given to us to guide us into all truth. In John chapter 16, verse 13, Jesus said, When the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all all truth. He is the one that reveals truth. Hallelujah. Amen. No. He is the one that reveals truth. He knows the mind of the Father. First uh, Corinthians chapter 2. That scripture in First Corinthians chapter 2 is very, very important. You need to take time to study it this week. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 to 12 let's take verse 10 to 12 but god has revealed them to us through his spirit you know he was already talking about uh if you read from verse 8 eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it been re revealed to anybody's heart you know the things that god has planned for his people but he says in verse 10 but god has revealed them to us through his spirit any believer who is waiting for the unbelievers around him to clap for him 
you know, and hail him for the things he's believing about Jesus right now, maybe deceiving himself. They don't understand what we are saying. The real truth of the scriptures cannot be handled, they cannot be tolerated by most unbelievers around you. No. He said, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. He said, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man who is, is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. God has shared his spirit with you. It all to bring heaven down to your life. You know, God, in the, your spirit is within you. The spirit of God is supposed to be living inside God right now. But he has shared him with us. Why? Well, he wants us to know all that he has ordained for us on earth. He wants us to live the life of heaven and earth. He wants his will to be done in the world as it is in heaven. And the only way that is going to happen is when the believers, his children, have a revelation of what he is saying. Eyes have not seen, and yet it has been revealed to us. Hallelujah. Verse 12 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Hallelujah. Amen. The reason the Holy Spirit was given to us is so that we may know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Amen. Believers, you know, go through a lot of suffering. And many of them are very, very unnecessary. The reason is because we lack revelation. You know, we continue to pray for one thing for several years. It's like God is a wicked God. He wants to punish us. He wants to you know, deprive us, you know, of the things he himself has promised. That is not so. It's because we lack revelation. Can I tell you something? All the brothers and sisters who think God has refused to bring they are marriage partners, for example. All oh, these years and years have passed. They have been praying and fasting for a marriage partner. And it's like God has been so wicked, he has refused to give them. All they need is a revelation. The day you get the revelation of how urgently God wants you to be married, in three months after that, you'll be married. Amen. Amen. You need revelation. Mm. You need revelation. Amen. In any area of our lives, we need a revelation of what God has said. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's not just knowing about it. You need a revelation of it. Mm. We will need a revelation of it. If we maintain a cordial relationship with the Holy Spirit, therefore, We should be walking in revelation or in new discoveries Amen. on a daily basis in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. We can have Bible studies, seminars, and you know, very powerful sermons about holiness, healing, victory, or even the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But only a revelation of these subjects make them to become a personal experience. The day you have a revelation of healing, beginning from that day, forever, 
is bye bye to sickness. All you need to ask for is revelation. Oh Lord, I need your revelation in the area of healing. It's, it's not just healing, but divine health. Divine health. Divine health. You need a revelation in, a, in the area of divine health. The reason is because the revealed word gives birth to faith. Amen. Amen. It is the revealed word that gives birth to faith. Amen. And the Bible says without faith, it's, it's impossible, impossible to please God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Hallelujah. You know, the written word of God that we read, yes, is God's word. But it needs to come alive in our hearts. It needs to be mixed with faith. It needs to be, you know, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to mix with faith in our hearts before it can produce. Before it can bear fruit. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. So, this word gives birth to faith. Anytime you have a revelation about anything, you have faith to achieve it. You have faith to become what it says. The word we hear that produces faith in our heart is the revealed or rema word. Rema. The word of God is in two levels. The written level and the revealed or what the Greek called rema. The revealed word, you know, propels you to achieve for God what the Bible says you can achieve. The Spirit gives you understanding of a particular verse of Scripture or a direct message from God that sparks faith to become or to receive what the Word says. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The Bible says in the Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, it says there is a spirit in man. You know, there is a spirit in man. Let, let's read that scripture again in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. Proverbs 20, verse 27. The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. The spirit in, in the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. This is where God communicates with us. Amen. Amen. If you have any dream from God, this is where that dream came from, your spirit. And God speaks to us with our human born again spirit. That's where revelation takes place. You know, either in a God given dream, you now understand. Okay? Or in a flash as you are praying, oh, you can you say, I see, I see. I can now see. You know, you see. What God says, that is revelation. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. That's why the scripture says in uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, where we read, Ephesians 1 verse 17, Hallelujah. Amen. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, mm. may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge, knowledge of him. Of him. Amen. Amen. We need the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge Amen. of him. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches 
of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You know, the one translation says that, that your eyes be flooded with light. Amen. All of a sudden, light floods, you know, lights come on the scripture you have always known. And it's like wailing in it. You are seeing it in, you know, in a different light now. You know, it's like you have been reading it in the dark, but light has shone on it for you. That is revelation. That is revelation. You know, Apostle Paul in this place is not concerned about the spirit of revelation alone. He is also praying for the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. I wish you can spend more time on this today. The spirit of wisdom. Wis it is one thing to receive revelation. It is another thing to apply it and benefit from it. That's where wisdom comes in. Amen. Many of us have received wonderful revelations in the past. As you are studying your Bible, you know, some words jump at you. You know, some words are ringing in your heart. You know, there was a, a sister, she's late now. She wanted to get married. And the Holy Spirit was re you know, revealing a, this particular verse of scripture to her. I think that should be Psalm 24, another verse 10. Okay, it says. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? This guy, you know, was dancing around her. He wants to marry her, you know. But anytime she prays, mm. that scripture comes up at her. Mm. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? You know? We, so we were in a Sunday school in those days, and uh, she came up and asked the question. If you are praying and you are always hearing. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? What should you do? Well, we answered her, you know, soft, uh, on the surface during the Sunday school. But after the service, we took her up. When you are praying about who to marry and the Lord is telling you this, don't go with that guy. Don't go with that guy. Unfortunately, she did. They got married. Only to discover uh, some years down the line that the brother was already married with children in another city. You know? And then, a few years down the line, she had gone home to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord. It's not just receiving revelation. Revelation is the equivalent of getting an information on the physical level. If you don't apply it, if you don't handle it you know, appropriately, it will still not benefit you. The Greek word sophias is translated wisdom, insight, or skill, both human and divine skill, or intelligence. Wisdom is the intelligent application of knowledge. This is how it works. First comes knowledge. Knowledge which can be physical information or divine information. You remember in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of no. knowledge. We need knowledge. We need physical knowledge. We need to know about our environment. We need to know some information about our physical health. We need, we need to know. We need to know. You know, for example, COVID-19, so many people have died so unnecessarily because of a lack of 
knowledge. You know, the doctors didn't even know how to handle them when this uh, virus started. So lack of knowledge can be very dangerous. You know, but at the same time, as you know, we need divine information. Divine information is called revelation. Hallelujah. It is revelation that leads to revolution in our lives. For a child of God, a revelation you know, revolutionizes your life completely. Transforms you forever. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I got a very little revelation in the area of divine supplies. I was just, you know, a new combat. About six months when I gave my life to Jesus. And I just got to know that, oh, God supplies our needs. And that is how I went through university. When I went to university, I didn't have any sponsor. Nobody was standing by there you know, to bear all the costs. No. No. Hallelujah. Amen. But thank God, the little knowledge I had, I was able to believe God for it. And that's how I went through the university. Amen. Amen. The knowledge, divine revelation, divine revelation. Secondly, knowledge must be understood. When you receive a revelation, you must understand it. Understanding. You know, in that place we read, it says, verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Amen. You know, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Right. Understanding simply means comprehension. You need to understand in what context is this. Many times you have a revelation, you want to, you know, really understand it. Exactly how do I handle this revelation now? What is this for? What is this for? Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I wake up about three days ago and God was giving me you know, a revelation. Because I've been praying all this while. Say, Lord, my brothers and sisters, as you know, many of them are, the least are increasing that want to get married. But nobody is coming. What should I tell them? I got this revelation that it is very easy to get married and people don't need to wait any longer. Amen. When you join us at the power of two at the end of this month, I'll tell you the details. You know, when you receive a revelation, you must understand it. We ask also for the spirit of understanding. We need to study physical information to gain comprehension. But when God reveals some things to you many, many times, you both know and understand at once. That's what happened to Peter. Peter immediately understood, you know, he got a revelation and he understood that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Amen. But for both understanding and revelation to be useful, they must continually be applied to particular situations, you know, at a particular time, in a particular place. That is what Rema is all about. Rema or revelation is given to us for a particular purpose, you know, for, to handle a particular situation, you know, in a particular place. And that is why religion is very dangerous. For example, many years ago, a man of God got a revelation that if he will pray into uh, a container of water and give the people who are sick to drink they will be healed. 
there was this, uh, there, there was a pandemic also at that time. A lot of people were dying. And the man of God got that revelation. Pray inside the water. As many as will drink the water, they will be healed. He said, all right. So, and he obeyed God. He prayed into the water. And the people drank it and people were getting healed. Hallelujah. But unknown to them, that was a particular revelation for a particular time, for a particular purpose. But what happened? It has become part of the ritual of that particular denomination right now. Years after the man of God had gone to heaven. They come to service with containers of water and they pray into it. Whether they are getting healed like you know, they were getting healed in the days of the original receiver of the revelation is another question. Revelation is meant for a particular time, a particular purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. This is very important. One thing is to receive revelation. What you do with it is also very important. Okay, We are, we are talking about uh, Peter now. Peter got a revelation that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. In Matthew chapter 16. You know. But then, a situation arose that demanded that, you know, Peter applied this great revelation he has received. In Matthew chapter 26, between verse 69 and 75. Peter, you are the one that received a great revelation. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Here is a situation now. Apply it. Mm. Unfortunately, Peter failed woefully. Mm. Mm. This great man of God, with this great revelation, mm. denied his Lord three times. You know, Within a few hours, it's one thing to have a revelation. What you do with it will be another thing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is wisdom. Wisdom is applied knowledge, applied revelation. The spirit of wisdom, revelation, and understanding. Very, very important. Very, very important. But if we check, I wish we will have enough time to look at the example of Pharaoh, this unbelieving king. In Genesis chapter 41, uh, you can read a story from around, uh, around verse 30 or even 29. Okay, this is the story of Joseph. Very, very important. Oh, no, the, the, this is the importance of revelation. This is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh verse, from verse 28. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Verse 29. Indeed, seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt. But after them, seven years of farming will arise. And all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine will deplete the land. So the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following. For it will be very severe. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice. Because the theme is established by God. And God will surely, shortly bring it to pass. Amen. Amen. Now therefore, look at verse 33. Now therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land. I don't, okay. Amen. Amen. Pharaoh had a dream. Two types of dream. He couldn't provide the meaning. Okay, Pharaoh seemed to have 
had a revelation. Let's call it revelation. But he had no understanding of it. And many times, believers, you know, while you're studying, you're having a revelation. God is showing you something in his word. Or God has spoken to you, you know, directly in a dream. And you want to get the understanding. You know, you are troubled. What can this mean? What can this mean? The eunuch was going from Jerusalem to Ethiopia. I was reading in the scripture where in Isaiah 53, he was wounded for iniquities and all that. He didn't understand what he was reading. You know, the Spirit of God had to send Philip to under, uh, explain to him that is understanding. In this place, Pharaoh had a dream. Did he understand? And thank God for the Spirit of God in Joseph. Joseph provided the interpretation, the understanding. Hallelujah. It be, you know, this is a kind of, the kind of revelation we are talking about. God has revealed what's about to happen. All because he was setting up his son, Joseph. Hallelujah. You know, this is what it is it said in the, the book of Esther. This is how the, what, this is what the king does for whomsoever he wants to honor. Amen. All this situation was set up so that Joseph can go on to the palace. Amen. Amen. Joseph provided all the interpretation. So, we have a full revelation in our hands. And thank God, and I know that it was not just Pharaoh, but God pushed him to do it. Pharaoh was wise enough to say, if you are the one that has interpreted this dream, yes. there's no other person that is wise, as wise as you are. Come and implement it. Wow. What a wisdom. What wisdom. You know, this whole interpretation will have been lost if Joseph was not there to apply the revelation. That is wisdom. This is the greatest need you know, in the church right now. So much revelation. You know, many preachers dishing out revelation. We ourselves will go to pray and we receive revelations. But how many of us are applying this to every area of our lives? How can a believer be praying and fasting? Oh, well, I, I, I know much, you know, in my area. As concerning their marriage, they are crying. One year, two years, three years, four years, five years. Some people for the past ten years looking for someone to get married to. That cannot be God keeping you away from being married when he himself said that it is not good for you to be alone. We receive revelation and we need to apply the necessary wisdom. Amen. Apply it to your life. Apply it to your life. Amen. Amen. An example of somebody who wasted revelation is found in uh, Daniel chapter 5. The time has gone. Oh, let's check it out. The story starts from verse 1 of Daniel chapter 5. Belteshazzar, who replaced his father uh, Nebuchadnezzar. A hand appeared while they were having their wild party in their palace. A hand appeared and wrote on the wall. Nobody could read it. But thank God for the Spirit of God in Daniel. Daniel, you know, successfully interpreted it. They had a revelation. They had a revelation. But the revelation couldn't be applied. Either because it was too late or Balthasar didn't repent you know, fast enough the calamity you know, that the hand was writing on the wall still came to pass but Balthasar was killed that night 
The revelation was there, but it could not be applied. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit will you know, further expand this word in your heart. We need to apply revelation. God is always speaking. God is always speaking to us. But we need to apply it. Joseph took over the administration of Egypt. You know, he set out ways of applying this dream that he has interpreted. The same thing for David. We read about in a first current, uh, first Samuel chapter 30. David consulted God. Can I pursue this troop? Will I recover my family? He said, David, arise. Pursue. You will overtake them. Amen. And you will recover all. Mm. That was a revelation. God spoke to David that day. But what did David do? Did they go to sleep? No. Even though they were so tired and worn out because they had been out for three days, they organized themselves. They got to work. They strategized on how to overtake the enemy. And what happened? The revelation that God gave him came to pass. For, you know, our revelations, what God speaks to us to come to pass, we need to work hand in hand with God. We need to be ready to work it out. That is where wisdom is needed. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Bow down your heads and ask God for the spirit of wisdom. And the spirit of revelation. The spirit of understanding. Yes, Lord, and ask him. Ask him. Yes, ask him. You, that area of your life where you have been suffering mm. has a solution. In God's word. And ask God for a revelation in that area. And then you get ready to apply whatever God will tell you. you know, Mary told the servant, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for your word. We give you praise today. Blessed be your name forever. I know that beginning from now, your people shall never remain the same. In the name of Jesus, we will no longer waste our revelations, but we will begin to take steps on how to apply whatever revelation we receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Glory be to your holy name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll have to end it here. But before we go, let me give you an opportunity to give. Amen. This is an opportunity for you to give. The Bible says when we give, that is when it shall be given back to us again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need a revelation in the area of giving too because without revelation it will be like, oh, these pastors have come again. They are forcing us to give away our money. You are not giving away your money. The money we give to God is not going out of our lives. But Jesus said it shall come back to us again. Now abundant measure, press down, shaking together and running over. Give online at gtccworld.org slash give. Give on Cash App or Zelle or whatever you can find on the internet there. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We receive these offerings, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We bless your people. Let it be given back to them in a hundredfold mm. in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Join me this Wednesday as we go, go on in the study of the book of Ephesians. God bless you. Amen.